Hi, I'm Patu from Fashion Cal. Today I want to talk to you about Nippon India Nifty B's ETF and how it fares against UTI Nifty Index Fund. When it comes to index investing, there are many misconceptions, um, some of them being that uh, uh, ETFs have got a lower expense ratio than uh, index funds, therefore ETFs are better. And even among index funds, there is a strong misconception that uh, an, uh, an index fund with the uh, with a lower expense ratio will have uh, will automatically mean a lower tracking error and therefore uh, better returns uh, when compared to I mean uh, the the returns with respect to Nifty 50 uh, TRI would not be so much lower. So all these are misconceptions and these misconceptions are mainly because in India it's very difficult to get proper tracking error data you have to look carefully in the fact sheets even in the fact sheets i think some funds don't uh, don't uh, offer it i'm not sure it's very difficult to find it and many people don't even understand that tracking error is a function of the time i mean if i if i measure tracking error for one year or six months or seven or three years it will be different and tracking error is just an essentially a measure of how much the uh, fund has uh, managed to uh, you know uh, uh, stay close to nifty next uh, nifty uh, uh, 50 total returns index that is in this case or the basically the underlying benchmark so uh, the the way the tracking error is calculated is identical to the way in which standard deviation is calculated uh, i think i will do a tutorial on how to calculate the tracking error maybe tomorrow so that uh, uh, any uh, doubts that you may have may get resolved so uh, another problem is that uh, uh, people fail to understand that in an ETF, a basket of the of the Nifty stocks is basically uh, traded like a like a, a single stock. The unit of ETF is uh, traded like a stock, and uh, therefore the demand and supply among the unit holders will govern the price of that unit. And that people will buy the uh, ETF units at market price, and they would sell it at market price, which can be significantly different from the any view of the ETF and if you notice all ETF returns are calculated with respect to the NAV and uh, not the price for the for the investor only the price matters but the what you see in the fact sheets are all NAV calculated and that NAV is what uh, will be affected by the low expense ratio the price will be very different also uh, the tracking error is also calculated with respect to the NAV and not the price as you, we will see below there's a huge difference if you calculate the uh, tracking error with respect to the price of the ETF and in, uh, instead of the NAV. So these both of these are Nifty passive funds tracking the Nifty portfolio and uh, the uh, e the expense ratio of the Nifty Bs is 0.05% and uh, for Nifty UTI Nifty index fund direct plan this 0.1%. So you can argue saying that uh, the UTI Nifty index fund has got twice the expense ratio of the Nifty ETF. That is not uh, the right way to look at it. I have several articles about Nifty uh, ETFs, how, how to calculate the price and AV fluctuations and so on. You can go to this post and have a look at them. Now, um, so let me just come straight away to, uh, yeah, so let me go straight to the tracking error. So let's take the tracking error calcul uh, calculation. We will do the calculation from 1st May 2019 to April 30th, 2020. The tracking error for the uh, Nippon India Nifty Bs ETF using the NAV of the ETF is just 0.16%. If you compare that with the UTI Nifty index, it is 0.19% for the UTI Nifty index fund. Then therefore you can say, mm, look, the ETF has done better because its expense ratio is lower. The, uh, this, is, uh, uh, this is wrong. We will, uh, because if you use the NAV of the, sorry, if you use the price of the Nifty ETF instead of the NAV, please recognize price is all that an investor will have to uh, actually worry about. The tracking error is 5.6% with respect to the ETF price. This is 34 times more than the tracking error with respect to the ETF now. And I have given a table in which you can see I have compared uh, the Nifty uh, B's ETF with respect to um, the UTI Nifty Index Fund and IDBI Nifty Index Fund. 
and I have given the tracking error for both uh, the ETF NAV and the ETF price. These are month, the tracking error calculated with respect to monthly returns rolled over on a daily basis. And you can get the data here. You can see that how the difference is for, uh, from April for the one month tracking error from 1st April 2020 to 30th April 2020. If you use the NAV, it's just 0.09%. But if you use the price, it's 10.74%. That's the huge difference. You can see the huge difference as I scroll down for different durations. You can go to the post and have a look at what those durations are. And please recognize that uh, uh, you should, if you are if you are doing an SIP of 1000 rupees, 2000 rupees or small fry, then it may be easy for you to buy and sell ETF units maybe uh, in a reasonable time frame. But then please recognize if, you, if you're going to do a much bigger uh, investment and you if you have lakhs and lakhs in a in the ETF and if you want to pull at least five lakh six lakh in a quick time then you may not be able to do it because of the uh, because the price may be uh, lower than the now and you'll be at a loss if you do it so you have you can set market orders and wait for the price to reach a particular threshold but then that may take weeks and weeks and weeks so, so please recognize that uh, the Nifton the Nippon Nifty B's uh, scheme document says you can buy and sell uh, units if there are 5000 units or uh, multiples of 5000 units you can buy and sell directly uh, with the amc at the nav uh, but uh, uh, that's for high i mean uh, high net worth individuals or institutional guys and so on but if the uh, units are less than 5000 then you will have to trade only in the secondary market there are certain conditions in which if you are not able to, you know, for if the uh, not able to sell freely, then the AMC may buy the uh, less number of ETFs from you. For example, one condition is the traded price of the ETF units is as a discount of more than 3% to the NAV for 30 continuous days and so on and so on. That is very unlikely to happen. So you can forget about it. You uh, small, uh, small, less number of units, you will have to trade directly with the, uh, with the, um, I mean less number of units you'll have to trade directly in the secondary market and you cannot have transactions with the amc which means if you're, if you're buying or selling a few lakhs you may have a lot of uh, market loss uh, because of the price fluctuations so please avoid etfs for investing trading is fine don't make the mistake of looking at the tracking error of the etf don't make a mistake of looking at the low expense ratio of the etf look at the price nav fluctuations High AUM ETFs typically may have a decent price NAV fluctuations, but that doesn't mean low AUM ETFs are bad. What matters is for an ETF, there should be an active authorized participant who is able to arbitrage out uh, the differences between the price and NAV. They, they will, uh, I had talked about this in another video. They will buy and sell, uh, they will buy the ETF and sell it in the, or sell uh, corresponding stocks in the market or do vice versa and arbitrage out the price in any differences. So uh, that kind of an active ETF is what you should look for, better still just use index funds. Also one point I want to make is that IDBI Nifty index fund has an expense ratio of 0.3%. This is three times more than the 0.1% of UTI Nifty index fund. However, the tracking ratio, the, sorry, the tracking error of the IDBI Nifty index fund is a little bit lower than the UTI Nifty index fund. So don't make the mistake of assuming just because an index fund has got a higher expense ratio, it means that its tracking error will be poor or its tracking error will be high. Uh, that is, do the tracking error math. I will show you how to do it in, uh, in, in the next couple of days. Please do it and then only uh, analyze the ETF. So I have given a summary of what investors should do. Avoid ETFs for investing. Trading is fine if you know what to do. Choose a reasonably low cost index fund, reasonably low tracking error. Don't want, don't look for the best index fund that are not going to work. UTI Nifty index fund may or may not be the best index fund. It is definitely much better than the Nippon India Nifty Bs ETF. So that's what I want to say. Catch you later. If you have any other metrics that you want me to show you a demo of, please let me know. And I'll do it.